We had an evacuation that did take place last year in uh, 2007. That was an eye opener. I mean, everybody began to realize the nature of what could take place, what could possibly happen. A lot of people have lost their peace of mind here because of that. And it's a terrible thing to lose. When I was in school, first and second grade, the teacher, Mr. Tinker, told us, once you guys reach high school, it's gonna start flooding. I believed him because I've seen it through so many years. We had uh, snowing in July last year. And in the coldest part of January, we had raining. Two hundred and fifty feet out there. We had a beach. But it's not there anymore. Climate change is, is is right here. It's happening. We're dealing with it. We we're we're dealing with safety now. If you don't believe climate change is happening, come and live here. Come and live in Kivalina. See how they did it, it was wrong, how they fixed it. It took them three months to do this, and they did not succeed. It was a failure to them. Three million. That's how bad it is. That's how bad sloppy job they did. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We ask your blessing. We ask for wisdom. We need your help in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Corps of Engineers has been authorized to build a rock revetment around most of Kivalina, both along the ocean side and all the way around to the lagoon side. This is a photo of what the revetment looks like in Shishmaref. The project we're going to build is very similar to this. Sam Bryce was the low bidder for the contract to build the revetment. We've only been awarded the first 400 foot, which I anticipate being complete somewhere around the end of August. That is way too short. I mean, considering all of the problems that we've been having since 2004. Um, when their work don't work out, what happens to the contractor? <laughs> The stated purpose of the project is to provide interim protection for the community. It's not considered a final solution to erosion. With the project that's coming in this summer, um, we're still not protected. We still have a battle ahead of us this fall. In 2004, one of the elders came up to me and said, I've never seen it this bad. I've never seen the water this high. Every agency that could respond to an emergency is far away. The closest helicopter that could possibly extract people is uh, about 300 miles away. 
what happens, helicopters can't land and people will drown. Since 2004, we don't have a choice anymore. We don't have a choice, we have to get off the island. As you all know, the Corps prepared a relocation planning document in June of 2006. We, we've been uh, in contention about some of the information that's been in, that's been put in that document. Mm -hmm. We need to set a goal, you know, move our village by such and such a year. It's been two years of nothing. Yeah, but the Corps doesn't have authority or funding or direction to pursue relocation of Kivalina. You know, no one's told us to, uh, it would be Congress who would, who would direct yeah. someone to uh, relocate Kivalina. Seagull eggs, that's what they look like. Seagull eggs. Boil them up, eat them up. Delicious. We can't hate them for what they do just because they never help us in our village. Love them more. They would just understand, they don't understand what life is all about here. We're just, uh, just like guinea pigs that, uh, that you just don't care about. If I drown, I drown. No, <laughs> no life is here. Make me feel like I am nothing. Yesterday I was so tired, maybe of thinking how we're going to escape. Wish we could relocate so we don't have to live in fear. You can't live in Anchorage without money. We can't have money to live in Anchorage unless we go to homeless. The suggestion for Kivalina to move to another community or, or just pack up their things and move to the city or something, it, it's unacceptable to us. We don't want to get mixed with other villages. We don't know where they hunt. We don't know how they live. I don't know what's happening. Everything change so quick, all because maybe climate change. My parents, they are totally dependent on the ocean, the animals that come out of it. I mean, our bodies cannot live off the white man's food. I just hope it don't hit us all of a sudden where we, where we can go anywhere. We are scared about it, man. If it washed away, then what's gonna happen to our cemetery over here? 
I don't think those will stay under the water much longer because all the gravel's going. This issue does not have any uncertainty to it. It's either this or that. It's either Kulina is going to flood or Kulina is going to be relocated. Once those lives are lost, there's no, there's no going back. There's no correcting. You can't correct that kind of situation. You can't correct that kind of result.